Welcome to the What's New video for Express 2.7. In this video, we will review the newest features of Express so you can get started using them right away. One of the major improvements is that we now include support for both Microsoft Office 365 business and personal accounts, as well as your Google G Suite account. To access this feature, click on the hamburger at the top of the page, and then Options, and then the Accounts tab. Here you can select the type of account you wish to add, Google G Suite, and a business or personal Microsoft Office 365 account. In this example, we'll add a Google G Suite account. Enter your account information, and follow the on-screen prompts. This will link your account to Express. To sign out, click the link. Now that you've added your cloud account, you can access documents, images, and other files stored in those accounts more easily. Previously, to add those resources to an Express page, you had to use the Web Page tool. To add a web page, navigate to your cloud drive, and then open the file. Now you can use our improved Add Images and Documents tool instead to insert cloud-based resources in just a few clicks. Click on the Add Images and Documents button. You'll have the choice of browsing your cloud drive recently accessed files, or your locally stored files. Here I'll select my Google account. I can browse the folders and view files. You can also filter the content. Here I'll select a PDF, open it, and add it to the page by clicking and dragging a box. You can move the objects around, and you can resize the object, making it as large or small as you wish. I like to place objects like this as a thumbnail on my page and then open them in full screen when I'm ready to talk about them with the class. This can be done with ease with the new Set to Foreground feature. Many objects will now have a Set to Foreground button on their object menu. Clicking this will bring the object to the foreground, making it full screen and allowing you to annotate over the object. This is a great way to place objects front and center as you discuss them. Then when you are finished, you just click the Exit Foreground button and you'll go back to normal view. If you return the object to the foreground, you'll see your annotations are still there, right where you left them. Let's leave foreground mode for this PDF and check out some other new features. In Express 2.7, we have expanded the symbol library. In the last update of Express, we added some music notation and some math notation, like the coordinate system. In this version, we have added several new symbols to the library. Bubble maps, Venn diagrams, week calendars and pie charts, hundreds charts, and a couple of others. First, let's take a look at the pie chart. Select it and click and drag to place it on the page. You can use the handles to resize the chart or change the size of the pie. Use multiple pie charts together by resizing the pieces to create parts of a whole. The hundreds chart is another new gadget. After placing the hundreds chart, you can use the options menu to tweak the chart to support the concept you are teaching. Maybe it is multiples of two or three, or primes. Change the starting and ending numbers and adjust the skip and highlight options to suit your needs. The other charts are great for mapping out ideas, planning the week, or reviewing what has been learned. Let's take a look at the week chart to review another new feature called Group Edit. Group Edit allows you to easily add other objects such as web pages, videos, images, documents, etc. to a chart. We'll start by adding a week chart. Then we'll go to the Options menu and select the Group Edit option. Similar to the Set to Foreground mode, the Group Edit mode will bring the chart to the center of the page and make it fill up the screen. Now you can add objects to the chart. Here we will add a PDF to review on Monday, a picture from our microscope lesson on Tuesday, and a video from YouTube about the solar eclipse on Wednesday. I 
I can also add freehand annotation and text. Then I can resize the objects and move them around. To edit a chart, you'll want to do so by using the group edit mode. When I'm done, I will select the exit group mode and the chart will return to its original size and placement on the page. Now I can select the chart and move it, and all the objects I added will move along with the chart since they've automatically been converted to a group object. Now when I want to discuss one of the topical resources I placed on the week chart, I can go back into group edit mode by selecting the chart and selecting group edit mode. The chart will be promoted to the foreground and I can interact with the content in the chart. For example, we can watch the video from Wednesday, could promote it to full screen and annotate over top of it. Then when we are finished, I can exit the video from full screen mode and exit the chart from group edit mode and go back to where we started. We hope you can enjoy the new integration with your Google and Microsoft Cloud accounts. We also hope you find the new foreground annotation mode and the group edit mode useful. Have fun with the new symbols and let us know what you'd like to see next 